Hello, everyone. Welcome to this hands online learning session. I'm Aileen Rizzo with the AIM Center, and I'm here with my colleague Scott. And we're excited today to explore with you pop up cards. Here at the AIM Center, we're committed to working toward a more equitable world through math and science education. And if you'd like to learn more about our work, please visit our website where you'll find resources and other events that are coming up. Along the way today, we want to encourage you to communicate with us, to ask us questions, share resources. So we're gonna ask you that you make sure that your um, chat feature is on and ready, that it's set so that everyone can see your questions and your comments along the way. So like I said before, we're here today to share some ideas around pop-up cards. I think it's a great time to explore this kind of an activity where we're communicating maybe with friends and loved ones. It's always nice to get something in the mail. So Scott, we talked a little bit about, you know, pop-up cards and our ideas around them. And we shared, we were, as we were discussing, we were sharing some ideas of what comes to mind when we think of pop-up cards. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> One thing I think about, you know, cards are are flat, and I know they're they exist in three dimensional space, but they're kind of a two dimensional paper thing, and I'm excited to see how we can take that two dimensional thing and really expand it into a three dimensional thing, um, and see that really that third dimension come out of the paper. So it's a it's a fun way to do that. Yes, definitely, and we talked a little bit about some of the really intricate um, pop-up books that we've seen um, probably at the store. They're really intricate, have a lot of details, just doing amazing things with the idea of popping out of a page and going from two dimension to three dimension. So on the slides that we'll share, um, I put a, a few of some of those examples that um, just maybe some of the ones that we've seen in the store, you know, with laser cutters and the precision of technology, um, what a 3D pop-up designer card designer can do nowadays is pretty amazing. Um, but we know that we don't have those tools in, in our home and, and access to those kind of intricate tools, but you've probably seen lights on pop-up cards, music, you know, the ability to record. I mean, everything is pretty amazing that's that's out there. And these are some examples of those things that you might've seen in the store um, on your way to just probably at a bookstore or something like that. But today we're gonna really explore some of those ideas. And um, part of what we do at the AIM Center is we try to be intentional about the steam that's out there. And so Scott mentioned one of those aspects is mathematics where you see a two-dimensional shape become a three-dimensional shape, right? Where something that's flat now has that embodiment of, of another dimension. It's really important that children uh, develop that sense of um, what those shapes are and how they can describe the characteristics of those shapes. Pop-up cards are a great example of that, how you can explore it through a medium of art, but also some engineering because we're gonna really think about what we're doing today. So we're, let's go over some of just the, um, the materials that we might need. And um, we'll discuss any maybe clarifying questions that you might have. So really basically paper and scissors, you're gonna be pretty much okay. Um, and really any kind of paper is good. Remember today we are exploring, we're really kind of coming at it as the novice, the new beginner. We're gonna look at three components that can go into making a pop-up card and how you can explore these. But you might want also a pen and pencil. And then when we think of just um, creating the art in our, in our pop-up card, you might want some embellishments. And so that could be anything from your markers, crayons, maybe you have stickers, other paper that you might want to use um, to cut out different shapes. I mean, you can go pretty much wild when you think about embellishments, but as we're exploring today, really be um, thinking about, you know, you might make a mistake or you might not get the end result the first time because we are just novices, we're learning for the first time. So we want you to be able to explore. Now a ruler is there optional because you might want to get a little bit more precise on where you're cutting or how long you're cutting something. So that's an optional piece where you might, might need a straight edge but pretty much paper and, and um, scissors are, are what we're gonna use today. 
Scott, did you have any uh, clarifying questions or things that you found out that you might need as you're exploring this? Uh, no, I, I played with this the other day. Um, just paper and scissors is fine. And I was just using regular old printer paper. So I think we're good. Sounds great. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to my dot cam here where you'll see some of my materials that I have ready to go. Um, just some things that, that I put to the side. You might need some adhesives if you're going to glue anything to your paper for embellishments. And then I have some colored pencils that I might use. So we're gonna get started. And like I said, we're gonna do um, three different components to help us explore the idea of pop-up cards. And so remember that as you're exploring today, please use the chat feature to ask any questions or to maybe you need something clarified. Please make sure that you um, communicate with us. So I'm gonna start off with a piece of paper here. And the first thing I wanna do is just fold it into what um, the size of my card would be. So if you're using a square paper, that's fine. If it's smaller, that's also okay. Um, I'm just going to, I'm using this rectangular piece of cardstock and I'm just going to fold it in half and get my basic shape of my card. So that's really what I need to be aware of right now. And also we're going to need to remember that when we cut these first cuts that we're going to make today is we want to Remember, we're going to cut on the folded edge, right? That's one mistake that, that you might make is you cut on the open edge instead of the folded edge, which is a common mistake, but just clarifying that right now so that we can be a little bit more precise when we do that. All right, so we're, we're looking at the three components. This first component is a triangular component that we could use in a pop-up uh, card. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna eye it because like I said, we're just learning for the first time. And I'm going to make a cut kind of in the middle and a little bit less than halfway thickness. So I'm just kind of using my scissors to kind of line that up so that it's perpendicular to that fold. And I'm just gonna make one nice straight cut and then stop. So after we do that, we're gonna do some folding. And this folding is where you're gonna see the triangle part come out. So I'm gonna take this flap here and I'm just going to bring it up. And you can bring it up exactly if you wanna make it exactly um, a 90 degree angle there. It doesn't really have to be, it could be a little bit more than that. Um, the only important thing is to try to do, probably want to try to do both sides the same as we're learning this component, but you can see here, I have that triangular shape. And then I want to do the same thing over here and try to make those in parallel. Now, as you explore these things, you probably want to do some intentional things when you come to a different project that you want to make. I just want to kind of fold those two up, the triangles. And we're gonna do um, a reverse fold, which just makes that fold that we just put in the crease a little bit more flexible. So all I do is I reverse my paper, turn it over, and then I bring those back around using that same fold line, those same creases, just to get a little bit more flexible. And my cardstock's kind of thick, so that's why I'm pressing down a little bit more. If you're just using paper, it's a little easier with your folds. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to put those back there and I want to open up my card. And you can probably see this rhombus like shape that my fold lines and my cut kind of have created. And what I want to do is I want to bring out and reverse those creases so that these two pieces come out of it. So I'm going to do that for the bottom and top flaps. And gently kind of just bring those out a bit and then close it so I can reinforce those crease, creases to the direction that I want them to be in. Now I know we have this empty space. And so if we were building the card all the way from start to center and, and doing all of our embellishing, you probably want to put that in another 
sheet of paper to kind of cover that outside. But we're exploring the components today, and this component is like a triangular pop-up, right? So it's closed, and then it looks kind of like this. And so I want us to really use our imagination a bit and think about what does this look like to you? What could you make out of this pop-up piece here? What do you see? What do you see the beginnings of? Kind of see a mouse. Um, maybe you see an animal. Maybe you see a face. So we're going to give about five minutes for you to embellish or just start thinking about what you'll create here. And we created a Padlet so we can share some pictures because part of what we're doing today is really asking you to explore and share your imagination and your creativity. As we're learning these pop-up components, we're gonna be exploring the ways that we might just see these things come, come out a little bit more. So we're gonna take about five minutes. I want you to just kind of start working about on this. What do you see? How could you create the object or the, the animal, the face? What do you see here? And we'll just get about five minutes. Oops. We've got a couple of people who've already said they see a bird beak. And uh, yeah, it's very bird beakish, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Start, start doing some drawing, start doing some yeah. embellishing. All right, there's our time. Oh, Scott is sharing his, very nice. It's a bird. I wasn't, I wasn't showing off, I was just trying to put it in the Padlet. <laughs> I, and we have like an ornament there in the Padlet. That's really great. It looks like the person turned it um, the other way and used it to write a message inside their ornament. So they saw an ornament when they saw the shape. When I was exploring, I think it was not the color, but the shape really um, inspired me. So I saw a Kermit the Frog kind of face. So I you know, created this kind of um, card out of that shape. And this is what I meant. So you can see that the color I used inside and outside was different. So I kind of covered that hole where I made the original cut. And then I just used paper to, to um, create the face, use some paint. And then I cut out some of this to write a message inside. So all different ways that you might see the color or the shape become what you want to create, or maybe you want to use the shape for something intentional. Um, just a lot of ways to explore this. Now, I know you're probably going to be in the middle of a card and then you, and then we're going to go do the next component. Um, so, you know, you might set this aside and say, oh, and now I know what I want to make. I'll set this aside and learn the next component. Um, and that's great to just have a lot of ways we're going to explore today together. Aileen, um, just a couple of things to point out. First of all, you didn't do that in five minutes, right? No way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just just clarifying there. <laughs> and then also, um, you know, once once I learned how to do this from you, I just kind of started seeing everything that was folded as cuttable. And so you can really kind of iterate these things. So I did a big um, triangle uh, cut, but then the folds in the triangle, I put more triangle cuts. So you can do just lots of different um, iterations and different ways to experiment with these things. Yes, definitely. And we're going to look at that in our next component um, a little bit more. So Scott is right. We don't have a lot of time today. So the embellishment piece could take a lot more time. So at the end of today, you might have like three unfinished cards, but we hope that it inspires you to go back to them, to look at them a little bit more. The first time I did this, I, I looked at the card and then I saw what I wanted it to become. And I started it, but I put it to the side. So part of being a, a maker and a creator and using your imagination is to add maybe a little bit over time and not to just have all that time that you're gonna work on it. So the components that we're working on today, like I said, we're exploring a little bit, seeing what's possible. And then I hope that you keep um, working on this. So the Padlet will stay open. So we st still want you to generate some photos and resources that you might wanna share. So let's go to our second component, which is more of a rectangular squarish um, kind of pop-up idea. So I'm gonna go back to my 
camera here so I can illustrate this for you. And once again, I'm just starting with a clean sheet of paper and I folded it in half. And I'm gonna cut again from the folded side where my crease is, right? And what I wanna do is use this as um, a way to generate a more rectangular pop-up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut, we're gonna make two cuts this time. And we're gonna to try to make them so that they're the same length. So this is where you might wanna use something like a straight edge. Um, I think if you eye it this first time, it shouldn't be too, too much off. But I just wanna illustrate where we're gonna exactly make the cut. So I'm gonna draw them in so that you can see where I'm cutting um, a little bit better on the camera. I'm just gonna use like a, a three by five card and kind of measure where I want the cuts to be. And so I'm gonna make two cuts. I'm gonna make one here and one over here. All right, so both lines kind of show you the cuts that we're gonna make. All right, so I'm cutting again on the folded side. I'm going to cut this one first. Once I'm about the same height, it looks like I do this one a little bit longer so I'm just going to cut them just a little like I said this is our learning experience so you don't have to be too precise all right so what I'm going to do is do some folding before I open it and I'm going to fold this flap um, up all the way to where I made the cuts and so if you didn't fold the cuts exactly this is where you could create uh, correct that just make sure the, that margin is the same or that parallel there and fold that down to a crease. And once again, we wanna reverse the fold so it's a little bit more flexible. This is especially true if you're using any kind of card stock thicker paper. So now I can put it back to where it was, that piece, and I'm gonna open it up. And I'm going to bring out that crease there, and then I'm going to go close it just so I can get all my crease in the right direction. And you see, it makes a very rectangular kind of pop up. Now, this is a great illustration for um, looking at what Scott was sharing is that you can do multiple rectangular pop ups to create different kinds of, you know, effects. So let me show you one for example that I already did, and then I'll show you how to do it. So this is one that I did where it's kind of looking like a pyramid. So I made ones that kind of look like steps, has like a pyramid effect by cutting multiple rectangular pieces next to each other, I can create that kind of effect. Now you can use this for a lot of things. You can put words on here, stickers, um, maybe flowers coming out, make a bouquet, lots of ways that we can use this design. So the way we get that done is we cut another rectangular piece right next to this one. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to do that and then you can explore that a little bit in our playwright. So remember, you now have kind of three layers here. You have this crease and then you have another piece here. So when you want to add one, you think about what side you want to add it to, and that's the crease you want to cut, right? So I'm, you just want to cut out one crease to add maybe a rectangular pop-up on this side. So I can cut it, you know, if I wanted it the same length here, or I can cut it right in the middle, and that's where the pop-up would be. So I'm going to get my three by five card and just show you really quickly what that would look like. So say I want to make one right here. Hmm, about hmm, that piece. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. And you want to make sure you're cutting out of just the top layer. So I'm going to turn that around and show you that I'm only going to cut out of this top layer. And then the same over here. 
and then go through the same process. So you would, you know, fold that piece up and then reverse fold. So I'm going to fold that up and then reversing the fold is a little bit more complicated because I have so many layers. So I might have to open it up a little bit to get that fold to go back in. All right. And so then I can open this up and you'll see that I have this piece here. And all I have to do is put my hand kind of inside to make the fold or the crease go in the direction I want it to go. Maybe I'll close it up, reinforce those pieces. And there I have two rectangular pop-ups like right next to each other, right? or one down and one higher. And you can add as many as you want or different shapes and different sizes. Uh, but what do you see? What, what could this be? I wonder what you would create using the rectangular pop-up. So thank you for those who are sharing on the Padlet. Let me give you some more time to explore. About five minutes. What do you see on this one? And share again what you're working on, what you've done so far, your explorations, and we'll see you back in just a little bit more time. All right, welcome back. So I wonder what we're getting. I see some things in the Padlet. I see a fireplace. And so that was really creative. Um, and it reminded me of uh, something that I forgot to share is that you can add places where you might reverse your pop-up to get some more um, structure or some effects that you might want. So this is another way that the fireplace could have been made maybe down here to reverse that fold. Lots of ways to explore the ways you could use a rectangular piece. Scott, what did you see in some of your designs? Well, um, so I'm always kind of a rule breaker. So instead of making the lines parallel or making the folds parallel, I wanted to see what would happen if I made the folds different lengths. Um, and so it's, it's still made with two cuts, um, but uh, the cuts were different lengths so that the fold was not, the fold, the crease was not parallel to the edge. And uh, I think if I had to make a design out of this, it kind of looks like an Easter Island head, one of those monuments yeah. from Easter Island. So I think that's kind of what it reminds me of. <laughs> it really does. Wow, I love the way you're exploring. Then I also, and I put a version of this in the Padlet, but what if we also did different lengths? So kind of parallel cuts, but of different lengths, and then the pop-ups end up being different lengths. So, yes. so then lots of things, different pattern. things to play with. And then again, this is just binder paper. Yeah. And you know, I am seeing like a Christmas tree, like if you turned it the other way, we have this like triangle where we have these layers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a cat. And I also kind of just went crazy on your, you know, different um, rectangular, you know, can add on to them and do them in different places. Like I said before, like once you, once I saw how to do this, every fold turned into something, hey, I want to cut that and make it pop. Cat <laughs> so. is saying that it kind of looks like a maze. I'm kind of yeah, seeing like yeah. one of those Adobe. And the last one you showed kind of looks like I could cut some windows and doors and have like an Adobe structure. Right. Or turn it up this way, maybe the kind of looks like a cityscape. Cityscape. Yes. Yeah. This would be a great so, way for children to maybe reflect <laughs> on a book they're reading or history yeah. they're um, learning about. Ancient history, modern history. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I hope that this gives some ideas. Thank you all for sharing and for communicating in the chat. So we have one last um, component we're gonna look at is when you add to the pop-up card. So the two that we've explored is when we um, cut the card or cut the paper and reverse the, the folds and make some folds to kind of bring out the illusion of this 3D dimension, right? But there's ways that we've seen pop-up cards where paper is added 
piece of paper that's there to kind of create that. And what we're gonna look at is the fan fold because the fan fold is used for a lot of different things or to make a lot of different effects. So I'm gonna show you an example and then we're gonna go through just um, exactly some of the things that I follow to create that. Because there's two different ways that we can maybe use a fan fold to get an effect. So like I said before, we are just taking the paper, folding it in half. And then I use other paper and added it here with adhesive. So here I made the fan fold and I um, glued it down in more of an angle to create kind of like a skirt effect. So there could be ways you can make a dress, um, but all kinds of ways that you might use this um, in different things that you want to create. But here I created the same fan fold, but I put multiple pieces together. So I get more of an umbrella effect. So I kind of saw a parasol with a woman's dress underneath in this kind of style. But there's, there's lots of ways to use it. You can see that the fan kind of lifts up. So you might use it as a screen to reveal maybe a message that you're hiding under your card. So we're gonna look at how I created these and then I'll give some time if we have some more, um, another play break. So I'm just having a square sheet of paper here um, and showing how you can create that fan fold. You're gonna first just fold this sheet of paper in half. If you have any squarish rectangular sheets of paper that will work, uh, sometimes you just have to see whether or not you'll need multiple ones or just one, depending on what your effect you wanna use. So I'm just folding that in half because I wanna um, create a way to measure the width that I want my fan to be in. Because my end result, I want it to kind of look like this. So this is the same size of paper, but we're talking about a fan fold so that we would get this effect here. So after I fold it in half, then I fold both of the edges to that center fold line there that I already created. What we want to do is get a width that we have throughout our fan fold um, as accurate as possible. It doesn't have to be very, very precise, but depending on the effect that you want, you want to get it pretty thin so that it still creates that illusion of like a fan, like the fan that we fold and maybe something you can close off. So I'm taking this other um, piece at the end, just on this side, and folding it up to that crease line. And you see now, now I have this thickness, but I, I don't want it that thick. I want it a little thinner. I probably want it half as much as this. So I can do that to this side as well. And get that measurement or that width the same on both sides. So now you see I have it on these two edges. I don't have it in the center yet. If you want to create it there, we could take this mid line here and take it just to that first fold line. And then we could do the same on this side. Now I'm sure that there are other ways to create fan folds and you or might already have one that works for you. So now I have that width and I want to take it one more time. So I want to probably take it half as much as this. So I'm going to take this edge up to that hole. And that's going to be my end. Okay. So at this point, I can start doing the folds where I know that I have to reverse every other one. Um, and these can kind of be my, um, ways to kind of measure if I'm accurate or not, because these have to be those lines that I'm going to cut in half. So if I take that first one and do the second one, remember you're going back and forth. I know that this next one will go right up to there. So it'll be halfway. And each of those, those fold lines that I already have in there are kind of like markers for me as I go throughout the folding process back and
one just about done. And um, the last one. Now my paper you can see is white and then pink on one side. So that's a little bit of a way, hopefully that you were, you were seeing that I reversed it every time. But this is the fan fold or accordion fold that we wanted to have that effect. And with this, if I wanted to create like a parasol, like the one I made here, what I did was I put a piece in the center, depending on how long you want to make it. So I, I pinched it in the middle and then I kind of made a fold line there. And then I could add either a whole piece or just maybe a half a piece in the center, depending on how wide I want. If you're doing something that's more vertical, don't need as much. I found out that I just needed like half of the sheet. So I would cut this in half and then use maybe just half to, to um, glue or tape to my paper that way. So I'm wondering how you're going to explore a little bit um, on this piece with the fan fold. There might be something else you're working on. Hope you'll still share with the Padlet what you're working on or what you created. Let's go ahead and take another quick um, play break here. And then we'll come back and discuss and share some resources and ideas that we have. Welcome back, everyone. I love a lot of what's been shared um, here in the Padlet. Some people are making birthday cakes um, and just exploring with the rectangular fold still with um, inside and out. So that's been very fun. I know that we've, we've given you a lot of options, so maybe it's a little overwhelming right now to consider all of them. Um, I wanted to share the one of the rectangular ones I made was additive as well. So adding this piece as a as a rectang rectangular component and then just hanging some um, snowflakes on it could make a little winter scene is one way you might explore the additive nature of um, of pop up cards. Scott, what did you did you have any other further exploration? Um. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do the additive thing. I just keep playing with these rectangles. <laughs> uh, but one thing I wanted to point it out: a couple of the things I put in the Padlet. This is just a greeting card. I think I got for free in the mail. Um, and greeting cards oftentimes have a lot of really great art in it, and they come pre-folded. And so that other one that I had showed earlier, I just turned the greeting card inside out, and that's what I used to make the pop-up. So we can kind of repurpose some materials, look at different things in different ways. So I just wanted to throw that one out there too. Yeah, very cool. We definitely have some people still sharing and I know we probably have some people that are still working as well. So thank you for exploring with us a little bit. Um, I wanted to show one slide and I think I added Scott's card as well, but the slide I wanted to show was um, one of the cards that uses multiple components. So we went over three and you kind of explored what you could make out of those three, but you might want to consider how you can combine those components together where you might have a fan fold together with a rectangular fold. So I made this one looks like a house where I use the rectangular for the body of that house, but then for the roof, um, it has a little window in there and you can put something inside, a message, I put a little heart there. But lots of ways you can keep exploring because when you see the combinations of these components um, together, you're probably, your, your imagination will go wild and what, what else could you create with it? So lots of ways we're seeing um, the steam coming out. We're seeing the 2D to 3D, like we said before, but if we just look at this one, uh, this is another one that Scott made with a card. Just the, the 3D component that's not only coming out, but then drawing us back in is what I really like about this one because um, I think someone made the fireplace. I could also see a fireplace kind of scenery with this kind of um, design. What other, what other steam do we have? Well, I know definitely art. 
we're seeing and shape. Um, definitely doing some measuring, um, even if it's, um, it's non-standard. I think we could get really intricate about the measurement that we're doing, depending on what we want to create. I think even with the technology, there's a lot of things that I know that um, different space programs, NASA and uh, SpaceX are doing about putting things in space that have to be folded up. And mm -hmm. so, you know, antennas and, and solar sails and kind of things, they're, they're looking very closely, not at, not just at origami, which I know, Aileen, you're, um, you've done a lot of work around, but also this kind of pop-up idea that, that things are cut and then they can open up and pop up and be three-dimensional um, and yet be transported in a small space. Yes. In, in design, the engineering and design that goes behind a lot of that is, is so amazing. And I think that as we have a different lens and run the world around us, we see a lot of ways that there are things in our, in our world that are, you know, 2D and come to 3D. I mean, if we go to get a paper bag at the groceries, we see, mm -hmm. we see that, you know, simple design, um, but it is something that um, has function, functionality as well. So that's what's so wonderful to explore. I hope that in this time of I mean, seasonal holidays or the season or just connecting with loved ones in different ways, that the way you can make can have purpose and intentional um, ways that you're trying to um, make someone smile um, who you haven't seen in a while or like to connect with. I hope that this has inspired you maybe to take your class on a little, um, uh, you know, making adventure of, in your classroom and try to see what they'll come up with. Um, and how they'll explore uh, making pop-up cards. So we thank you for exploring with us today. And I hope that you'll still continue to share. I see some people adding to the fan folds now and what they're doing with those looking like steps and, and drawing and coloring. So I hope you'll still add some of your um, work there. And if you're gonna use this for the classroom before um, the winter break that you'll be able to put some of those pictures there. Cause it's always nice to see the photos of others and, and be inspired by others' creativity. So we'll go ahead and um, announce the sound of coding. And I think that's Scott. It's Scott's gonna be sharing the sound of coding on our next Hands Online that's into the new year, 2022. And so we're looking forward to exploring um, coding as far as sound. Maybe you think of it as only syntax or electronic, but to think, to think and explore it in different ways is always a lot of fun. So Scott's working on that presentation coming up. So thank you again for um, joining us for Hands Online. We hope that you've had a, a nice time making with us. Um, please visit aimcenter.org for viewing past Hands Online as well as looking at resources that we've shared in the past. We hope that you'll um, continue to connect with us and that you'll have a happy new year. See you next time. Thank you everybody for joining us today. And thanks for adding to the Padlet. <laughs>